SliceofSciFi.com. Hello, Slicers. I'm uh, Michael, of course, and uh, I am here with one of our favorite friends, Mr. Jeffrey Notkins of the Meteorite Men. Uh, we were at the uh, Challenger Space Center, and you were there unveiling something pretty cool, and uh, we have to talk a little bit about that. I was, <laughs> and uh, thank you for the compliment. Oh, You're thanks. my favorite science fiction show in the history of time and space. Well, that's what we're hoping everybody will say, actually. <laughs> and you know what? They'd be mad if they didn't. <laughs> yes, it has been a very special event at Challenger, and viewers will likely remember, at least viewers who are aware of things that are going on on this planet mm -hmm. and on others, as you guys probably are, February 15 of this year, there was an enormous meteorite event, a fireball, subsequent explosion, and shower of meteorite fragments over mm -hmm. the Russian city of Chelyabinsk. Chelyabinsk. I had, well Chetnia. I had Chetnia in my head for some reason, but you, that's not right. You have good uh, pron pron pronunciation. <laughs> well, that's good, good, because my English isn't so good. Uh, so English go. good too. <laughs> Chelyabinsk. <laughs> this was the largest meteorite event since mm -hmm. the Sokoda Lean Fall of 1947, which, wow. by the most amazing coincidence, also took place in Russia. And I'm often asked, Jeff, we've had... Chelyabinsk, 2013, Sokotalin, 1947, Tunguska, the mysterious mm -hmm. one, 1908 in Siberia. All these enormous meteorite-related events in Russia. So people go, what's the deal? Mm -hmm. Why does everything land in Russia? And the secret answer is... Because it's a really big target. It's a really big space, yeah. <laughs> we should we we should be talking about China, too, because China actually has a lot of strikes as well. We just don't hear about them nearly as much, right? Isn't that correct? Well, and I'm sure that they, they collect all the meteorites that fall, and they grind them up, and they research them, and they, they try <laughs> to extract secret information that they can they can use against us oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, later in the upcoming world war we're not supposed to mention. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> we don't it's, get political here. We're just a small joke. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, such a small joke. I digress again. <laughs> the reason we're at Challenger is mm -hmm. to unveil a marvelous piece of the Chelyabinsk meteorite, which was now. Picked up. This is one you didn't find, right? Uh, I'm, it's unusual. Yeah, I was yes, going to say you're the meteorite the guy. You're supposed to be getting all of them. I know, <laughs> but you know, fair is fair. It's a big planet. Quite a few meteorites fall. Mm -hmm. It would be. I'd be sort of. Like that obnoxious kid from next door who takes your <laughs> wagon after right after your birthday if I went out and collected all the meteorites. The, the truth is I did not go to the site of the Russian mm -hmm. fall for two reasons. One is my paternal grandparents were Russian. Mm -hmm. And I spent a lot of time in Russia. I love Russia. And between an estimated 1,200 to 1,500 people were injured, some of them very seriously, mm -hmm. as a result of the meteorite fall. They weren't hit by meteorites. Right. The shock wave blew out windows and caused all kinds of damage. And yeah, so there it was a, a major of, event. It was. And it's the first time in recorded history that we have actual large-scale human injuries mm -hmm. from a meteorite fall. And this should be a wake-up call for people who go, oh, we don't have to worry about near-Earth objects crashing into the planet. Absolutely. That'll probably not happen for another million years. Wake up. It just happened in February, and that was a teeny one compared yes. to what could happen. And yeah. what will happen? Let's face it. It's well, not it like got this. a major amount of news, news coverage. I mean, it's it's surprising. It was all over YouTube. And yeah. I mean, everybody was talking about it in February. I well, know I know you got texted a million times wondering if you were heading for yeah. the, <laughs> including by me. <laughs> it was so funny that morning. I was exhibiting at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. We were still open. And I got up very early because we were doing a fundraiser that day. We were, we were uh, raising finances for the Challenger Space Center Arizona and mm -hmm. the Hope Animal Shelter in Tucson, two nonprofits that I support in Arizona. And I got up very early to go down to oversee the raffle drawing mm -hmm. for the prizes. And I start getting all these texts and voice messages and everyone's going, Jeffrey, are you going to Russia? Are you going to Russia? Have you left for Russia? Are you in Russia yet? When are you going? And I hadn't even looked at the news that morning. I got up so early. And I'm listening to my phone going, why have all my friends gone mad at the same time? <laughs> and then, of course, I get to the showroom and I put on the laptop and I go, oh, Major, major, major event. event. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I decided not to go uh, out of respect for the many people who were injured. That's mm -hmm. part of it. That's the official story. The other okay. story is I was filming with NASA, uh, and uh, I had committed to do a very exciting project. Oh, with that them. NASA! I they don't. Know. They don't need. Uh, yeah, they're so Look, needy. When NASA calls <laughs> and goes, deep, would you be able to <laughs> deep film with us? Deep, you don't say no. It's like when the president asks you to serve. Absolutely. No, that's very, very cool. Congratulations but on that. Thank you. But the so 
the, the happy outcome of all of this is I have two very close Russian friends who are mm -hmm. meteorite hunters, and they've guessed it on Meteorite Men in our, in our Dronino episode that was filmed in Russia. Mm -hmm. So, of course, they're, they're expert hunters, and they went straight to the site, and they recovered many pieces, and they are affiliated with the Russian Academy of Sciences in Moscow. Mm -hmm. So we were able to rubber stamp the export of some pieces, cool. and, and the best of them is now residing splendidly in the Challenger Space Center. That is so cool that we've got one here. I mean, it really is cool that we've got one here. And your little exhibit there at Challenger is just really cool. It's amazing. If you if you folks have not actually had a chance to go see it, it's at the Challenger Center. It is here in uh, Glendale, Arizona, not Glendale, California, but <laughs> Glendale, Arizona. And uh, you can go to the uh, exhibit and see some really amazing pieces from the Meteorite Men um, TV show, things that you wore on the show some of the media a lot of the meteors the big one that you actually found on the show is actually there on display as well our 230 pounder yeah along with i think it was a wardrobe <laughs> and director's slates there are over 100 meteorites in the exhibition plus a lot of the tools and equipment that we used during mm -hmm. the making of meteorite men and i wanted it to be more than just a just cabinets with rocks in right i mean i think that's cool but mm -hmm. not everybody does and so it's part an exhibition about meteorites and the science of meteorites, but it's also an exploration of how we hunt for them. How do we find these mm -hmm. cosmic visitors? And how did we make the television show? How did we film Meteorite Men and what did we use? Exactly. And it's called They Came From Outer Space. It mm -hmm. will be running until October of next year. Oh, wow. So it's a two year run. We expect over 100,000 people to visit the exhibition. Very cool. And if you'd like to learn more, visit theycamefromouterspace.com. There you go. It's not a bad domain name, is no, it? No, it isn't. That's a really <laughs> cool domain name. Thanks. Well, very cool. Thank you so much, Jeff, for uh, stepping by and uh, letting us letting us experience this with you. It's my pleasure, Captain, <laughs> as always. All right, folks. Well, if you want to learn more, of course, go to the website, SliceOfSciFi.com. Cheers. SliceOfSciFi.com.